So today we are looking at a Beta FPV 1 Watt Express LRS Micro 2.4 GHz transmitter. I know that is a mouthful. Uh, Beta FPV was kind enough to send this out for me for review. Uh, the module itself, the build quality is actually really high. Um, I'm used to using a Ghost module, which is known for its high build quality. Um, and just holding this thing in the hand, the external plastic sort of the way everything fits together um, and sort of how the lines are, um, I gotta say it doesn't feel like a step down at all. Um, I know the Ghost module is, is, is one of the best, but uh, this is uh, this is really high build quality. This is super nice. Uh, it comes with this nice beta FPV antenna. It also comes with this standard sort of, uh, I don't know, is it, is it dipole antenna? Um, which is a little bit more basic, but it does come with both, which is really nice. Um, and one of the downsides to using the, the Ghost transmitter, which, which I have running Ghost uh, for Express LRS, is this is only 350 milliwatts of output power. This has one watt, at least this version does. There's also a 500 milliwatt version, but this version we're looking at today has one watt. Overall, it has a, a nice LED fan. It has an XT30 for external, external power. Um, now that is 2S only, uh, 3S will burn up the module, so definitely only plug 2S in, uh, and also it has a USB-C port for software updates and data transfer. It has this nice OLED screen, and this 5D joystick for navigation. I really like these two features. As somebody who is coming over from Ghost, uh, it, it does have similar features. It's got the OLED screen and the 5D joystick, which means that you don't always have to use your Lewis script, which can be super, super handy. When it comes to the screen and the joystick on this module, I know when the first version came out, the 500 milliwatt, and maybe even for this version for a short period of time, uh, the way that it worked is there was a custom build of Express LRS that you had to use uh, that would enable the 5D joystick and you know OLED screen. At the time, there weren't a lot of modules that, that, sort, of, that sort of had that functionality. And so it wasn't uh, built into Express LRS, just the vanilla default standard build of Express LRS. As we move forward in time, Express LRS has integrated the support for um, like joysticks like this and OLED screens into like the stock vanilla version of Express LRS. And so what that means is you can now update to the just generic vanilla build of Express LRS um, and it just works right out of the box. You get joystick support, everything's beautiful, it works great. Um, or you can still choose to run the beta FPV fork that this ships with. Um, so now uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get this TX updated uh, to the latest version of Express LRS. So it's super important that you always have an antenna on when you go ahead and power up any transmitting module. Um, and so beta FPV does specifically state that you need to make sure that you have an antenna on when you turn this on. So that's super important. Um, definitely heed that advice. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and turn our radio on. Okay, um, and so you're gonna need to set up a new model. I already have one set up, but I will go over some of the small things you do need to do <clears throat> with your model. So if you go into your model settings and your radio may be slightly different than this, but we're gonna go into our model settings. And as we scroll through, um, it's a few important things are that you want your ADC filter to be off. That goes for really any radio link. If you're using Betaflight, you always want your ADC filter to be off. In this case, we're gonna have our internal RF module off because this Radio Master TX16S has a built-in four-in-one module that we're not gonna be using. Um, and our external RF is the module that we just put in the back, the Beta FPV TX. And your external RF mode needs to be set to CRSF. I don't know if you can see that, so we're gonna zoom in a little bit and that needs to be set to CRSF, and as you can see, the ADC filter is off. Um, and CRSF is just the internal protocol that the radio uses to talk to that module in the back of the radio. Uh, and personally, my radio uh, in my version of Edge TX that I'm running uh, supports megabaud. Um, it's just a really high baud rate, um, and so that's good. I think the stack is 400K. I'm running at 5.25 million. I know some radios are limited to like 1.87 or 3.75, um, but turning that up does improve the performance of the link. 
Um, and so that's sort of the main setup on the radio. Um, we're going to go into our Lua script. And we're going to turn enable Wi-Fi on and we're going to press OK to confirm. And so now Wi-Fi is running on here. So let's open the configurator. And I'm on 2.4, so now we're going to flash 2.5.0, um, our device target. Oh, I already picked it up. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Um, and so we're going to flash the micro uh, 1000 milliwatt. The first time I flash this, um, it can, uh, when you go to, let me see if I can find the error that I'm looking for here. Um, if you are trying to flash a different device than is what is registered on the device, it will yell at you and ask you to confirm. That looks like this. Um, so when I went to flash it, it said the current target was 2400 TX micro um, and the image we're trying to flash is the TX micro 1000 milliwatt, like are you sure? Um, and we're going to go ahead and hit yes. It looks like the wrong firmware was flashed to this when it showed up. Um, so just something to consider. You do want the TX micro 1000 milliwatt if you have the one watt version. I noticed the same thing with a couple of my receivers that I got from beta FPV. They shipped with the wrong uh, firmware on them, like my flat antenna. Uh, we're going to flash over Wi-Fi. Here's where you can download the Lua script for your radio if you need it. We're going to do standard mode. Uh, this first option basically is for US, so we're going to click that. I have my binding phrase in here. You can make it anything you want. We're not really going to change any of the other settings. I do have my Wi-Fi, SSID, and password in here. Um, and it actually already found the Wi-Fi device here. This is my uh, module that's just sitting there. It just detected it on the network automatically because last time I flashed it, um, I had my Wi-Fi uh, information in here and I'm connected to that same Wi-Fi. So I'm going to hit build and flash and with any luck this will actually write to my radio as well. And we're going to let it go through its thing. This, this can take a moment. I don't know if I have it up, but I was having issues getting this to build the other day. Uh, where it was getting errors when it was building. This wasn't an issue with this module. This is just an Express LRS issue, sort of in general. Uh, so those type of things do happen. And if you have issues, uh, definitely check out the Express LRS Discord. Um, when I was having this problem, uh, this gentleman or lady, I suppose, uh, Deadbite on the server um, was was super super helpful. Um, what message can I load? Um, in getting me a. Um, a build built so that I could flash my stuff. So I wasn't able to build, uh, the developer was, so they had, went ahead and built it for me and sent me the file. Um, so that was super appreciated. Um, so if you're having issues, definitely check out the Express LRS Community Discord. Uh, there's a ton of help. So it looks like, uh, wait for LED to resume blinking before disconnecting power, uh, success, and it says make sure to update the Lua script on your radio, um, which you can then download and put onto your radio. And I'm sure you saw as I was talking, uh, this exited Wi-Fi mode, and it should be running. Uh, this does say 2.4 still, so we're going to go ahead and get out of this menu. This says 2.5. We're going to go ahead and turn the radio off. Power the radio back up. And let's pop into that Lua script and see what it says. And there we go, we're on 2.5. 2 the Lua script is a rockin'. And now we're on uh, 2.5. Uh, so that's that's basically the update process. Updating the receivers is very similar. So my overall thoughts of this module and Express LRS as a whole are really, really good. This module is extremely nice. The Express LRS link works really, really good. Um, the only downside I'll say is that the module does pull quite a bit more power than just using the internal 5-in-1 inside my radio, um, or even more than Ghost. Um, kind of the stark difference, I think, is that this does pull more power, um, makes more heat, which sort of requires the fan. Now, the fan on this one looks really cool, and it's super, super nice, but the fact that it needs a fan is kind of a bummer. Um, it adds a little bit of noise, but that's not a big deal. And also just the additional power draw you get from Express LRS. Um, it's not a problem with this module. It's just like an Express LRS thing. Um, I know Pavel has a video, which I will link down below, where he actually tests this a little bit. I believe it's actually on an internal module, and maybe the Zorro or something along those lines, where Express LRS just 
pulls more power like all the time than other protocols. Um, so I guess that's a little bit of a downside, but at least with this module, they do give you the 2S XT30 option just to hook up an external battery, and that totally gets rid of that concern. Uh, so with that said, um, if you're in the market for an Express LRS module, I think this one's really nice, and I would definitely consider buying it. Um, the LED fan is relatively quiet for a fan of its size. Uh, it looks cool. Uh, the 5D joystick and OLED screen work with uh, native vanilla Express LRS, and yeah, I haven't really had any problems. The only problem I did have was that small problem flashing, but that was not an issue with the module. That was just an Express LRS bug that happened to be happening for the day that I was first trying to update, but I went back the next day and tried again, and it worked fine. Um, I did try that across multiple computers, and it was definitely an issue with Express LRS, not me. Um, but yeah, overall, this is definitely a nice module. I think for $49.99 is what it's currently going for as of the time of this recording. Um, it's a decent buy. Uh, something like a Ghost module is going to cost you more money. It's going to have less output power. Um, and the Ghost receivers are like 30 or 35 bucks, um, whereas you can get Express LRS receivers for 10 to $20. And that's including these really nice flat antennas. Uh, this flat antenna here is a Beta FPV V1.1 flat antenna. And these are really, really nice because you can bury them down in a build and not have to have a bunch of external stuff hanging off. Um, also really, really nice for micros. And now that they've worked out um, with LoRa, um, and these new chips, how to get a lot more range out of 2.4 gigahertz, it's definitely the way to go. Um, this module is awesome, comes with two antennas, like I said, LED light. Um, yeah, it's great. So uh, big thanks to Beta FPV for sending this out my way for review. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Um, if you do pick one of these up, down in the description below, I have an affiliate link. Uh, if you're buying anything from Beta FPV, it helps me out. It also lets them know that uh, some human being watched this video. <laughs>